Hello and welcome to another episode of This is Australia. Now that's what I call a coffee. But this is a coffee with a difference. We are at the marina in Corfu, the Gubbia Marina. And we are searching for our coffee, our good coffee. Remember, we went all around Los Angeles and we couldn't find a good coffee. I think that the Americans are well known about the taste of coffee. And I tried the Americana coffee and I tried all the different types of coffees, but nothing was like the real stuff, like the real Italian coffee that we taste in Rome or everywhere we go in Italy. And then I come here in Corfu at Gubbia Marina and I taste the real coffee. I'm here now with Costas, and Costas explained to us how he makes his different coffees. Now, one thing that you find here in Corfu and in Greece is the cold espresso and the cold cappuccino. If you search around Australia, you will never find anything like this. Or if you do find that iced coffee, they actually put ice cream in it. Now, here in Greece, you find this I only saw it actually in Greece. They make the cappuccino, cold cappuccino, and cold espresso. And Costas has an amazing way to do it. It's very simple, really. I mean, your espresso coffee, just using this machine here, just to shake it up, and just make nice foam with it, nice, nice cream on top, and just add some ice. Very simple. With your cappuccino, it's a little bit different because you have to add the milk. Now, you just take the milk and you put it into the mixture and you just get very nice foamy um, milk. You can see all the different colors here from the coffee. So this is your cold cappuccino. They call it Fredo here in Greece. And this is your espresso. So when you order it, it's espresso Fredo and espresso cappuccino and of course there's the other variety which is the eastern coffee nescafe and the well-known frappe for all the greeks now if it's summer and you are in l.a or you're in sydney or you're anywhere in the world wouldn't you just want to have something nice and cool even your coffee so why can't we get these varieties anywhere in australia or in the u.s of America. We also asked Costa to make an espresso, just a normal espresso. You go to Italy, all the Italians that just go to the bar, they order the espresso, that always serve with water. Please, please, when you serve your espresso, just take some, not just any water, it has to be bottled water, because the Sydney water just melts a little bit. So basically, we had an espresso, and you know what? We had the magic espresso spoon. Why am I so fussy? Because when you just get a little cup of espresso, my dear friends, that you make coffee in Sydney or in Los Angeles, we don't take a timber thing like that to just tear our espresso. No, we just use this, okay? Another thing, that happened to me in Sydney quite a few times, they just give me this spoon. This spoon for my little espresso cup. And when I actually complain, you know what they said to me? I don't worry, just use it the other way around. Excuse me? Okay, so lesson number one. You want to make an espresso? You take something from another country, go there and see how they do it. Like they do it here, like Costas is doing it. This is the espresso spoon. This is a teaspoon. See the difference? Ah, yeah, you know now, huh? Very good. Okay, lesson number two. Oh, sorry. I touched it. So Costa just made us another Freddo cappuccino. I have to learn it myself. Freddo cappuccino, the iced cappuccino. Look at it. You can see now how it sort of settles down. You can stir it. And here in Greece, people take probably about two, three hours to just finish it they take their time. At least they still have money for the coffee, and that's for sure. Now, another thing that it's worth checking out here 
is this alcohol okay so why am I talking about alcohol here in a coffee shop this is exactly that a coffee shop a coffee shop with any alcohol you like how many places in Sydney you have that you can actually serve you alcohol as well you have to go to a bar to a pub maybe some of the restaurants that they serve you alcohol in Sydney you don't see places like this now one other thing that is quite amazing around here when they serve for example ouzo they have a mezze with it and you have all these amazing little bits and pieces nibblies that you can eat because you cannot drink your ouzo by itself but they do the same thing with beer Be for, you have your beer you can have a different mezze different nibbles for the beer so always cheaper ouzo and beer you can order it and you can have the nibbles to go with it So here we are, we just order a nozzle with that mezze, the nibbles. Now have a look at this. This is one of the best ones they can have. There's another couple. And you know what? Most of the good ones are actually made in Mitilini or Lesbos. This is from Lesbos. Yeah. Now, check this out. Mm. <laughs> now, when you have your ouzo, add a little bit of water. But you can just have it just with the eyes. And remember, look at this. I mean, that's incredible. And that's normal. When you get your ouzo, they just always ask for the mezze to go with it. And when you're in Greece, enjoy your ouzo, enjoy your nibble. And also remember, with your beer, you can have the same thing. Let me enjoy mine here now. This is for one person. My God. Come on. Join me. Well, one of the great things that I've seen while in Los Angeles, it was the recycling factor. And I tell you what, I think that they are a good example that we could follow in Australia because they recycle almost everything. But since I'm here in Corfu, I thought maybe we should have a look at the recycling here in Corfu as well. And guess what we're going to recycle? Yeah, dead skin. This fish here they feed on the dead skin. You can see it there. They say it's not painful, but I don't think so. But I'll give it a go. See what happens. Okay, we are ready. I, I somehow feel like um, some sort of um, sausage or I don't know what, but I feel like I'm going to be eaten. They look like piranhas to me, but um, they look really hungry. Look at them. They're just waiting for my feet to get in there. This was here yeah, getting jealous.
well, this is a great feeling. It tickles. It, it's not actually painful at all, but it feels very strange when you actually put your foot in there and it, that, it's just attack it. Um, it's, it's really an amazing feeling. And, you know, it's, it's not bad for you. And like I said, it's recycling at its best, isn't it? So I would strongly recommend it. Whenever you find it, just jump into it. It could look a little bit horrific, but I tell you what, it's a nice feeling after all. Now, since we're into food, <laughs> this time they are eating, not us. Let's have a look a little bit around LA again. For example, what's happening out on the streets? Well, in many streets around Hollywood, for example, and especially West Hollywood, I found a lot of places where there is an abundance of fruit and you can actually have your fruit salad there on the street or even your juice. And um, you see them everywhere and uh, it's a very good thing because you can have all this natural fruit and veggies everywhere you go. But be careful, don't fall for some signs like this one here. Now, <laughs> yeah, free ice cream. You know, it's not free ice cream. I actually just read the, um, the fine print. <laughs> exactly. It's not free ice cream. Another great thing over in Los Angeles and everywhere in America is the happy hour. So if you want to save yourself some money and still have some nice drinks and some nice food, it's a good idea to just check these times. Between 4 and 7, it's normally a good time for happy hour and the prices are normally slashed at least by half. And then, um, oh my God, this actually that hurt. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm getting eaten here. Can you see? They're eating and I'm getting hungry. What's going on? And the decoration in general around the pizza places and everywhere, it's just great. I mean, they're really good in great decoration in the shops, like this pet shop. I mean, great um, decoration on the uh, window front. And they actually using just paper, just cardboard, recycled cardboard. I mean, and, and look at this, this is beautiful art. But when you go inside the pet shop, you just realize that they sell just about everything except for pets. Actually, it's not allowed to sell pets over there. And the amazing thing is, this particular window that you see now, where they sell even clothes for their dogs. Yeah, you can buy clothes for your dogs in LA. Now, just let me concentrate on this because I think that they're getting a little bit too serious. Yeah, so this is recycling at its best. Something that is dead, and they're getting fed out of that, which is incredible. I don't think you can eat those fish though. But uh, going back to LA on the recycling front, it's very nice to see a lot of the decorations all around the shops, in many, many shops. Uh, they have used a lot of recycled products, I mean, beautiful doors and uh, lots of recycled furniture. Plus they do make a lot of furniture out of recycled timbers. Now look at this restaurant here. It's actually Roma Cafe and all the tabletops are made out of recycled Oregon. I mean, Oregon is everywhere because it's a native timber over there. And uh, a lot of the places, they have been decorated very nicely, the coffee shops and um, clothes shops and, and many, many shops with beautiful recycled and reusable materials. Well, when it comes to busking around here in Corfu, you get some of the students here from the musical university, and they go out there on the streets and they play some beautiful Cretan music, which is quite nice to hear. But when it comes to Hollywood, though, things are completely different there. And this is the beauty of Los Angeles and Hollywood. Have a look at those videos that we got from Hollywood. It's incredible. Like all the different characters from Hollywood, they come alive there in front of you. 
and the fun just it's incredible you could spend a whole day just there in Hollywood just checking out this particular people they are all so professional they're so good that you just don't care to just take out your wallet and give them the two dollars or three dollars or five dollars even ten dollars where do you start you start from the avatars and then you have the Now check out the Zorro, for example. But the one that really fascinated me was actually these dancers. Now have a look at this. These guys, they're there every single day. And they just look so good, so professional. And they're all here for one reason just to be famous themselves. They're in the middle, the capital of fame, the capital of entertainment, they're in Hollywood. And they have only one dream, to become famous. And some of them, they really deserve it. Like these guys here, they're not too bad. Well, it's great to see these superheroes everywhere around here in uh, Hollywood. But sometimes you see some um, of these <clears throat> not so superheroes, like this super fat hero. And he's the, um, I think he's supposed to be the super fat man. <laughs> We just thought we'd just stop and have a, a beer. This is actually a beer that's made here in Kofu, Kofu beer. And um, it's a natural brewed beer. It takes about 35 days to actually be brewed. They also bring you a mezze. And the mezze, as we saw earlier with the ouzo, it's different for the beer compared to the, uh, the ouzo. You get more cooked food here with the beer, while with the ouzo, it's mostly called meze or nibbles. Now, behind me you can see the, um, the new fortress. As we said earlier in another episode, that doesn't look too new, does it? It's about 500 years old, believe it or not. But since there is an old one as well, which is 1500 years old, the Corfields thought that they have to call this one new. For our, our Australian or even American standards, that doesn't look too new. But for these guys here, that's that's new. One great thing about cities like Corfu, Athens, Los Angeles and Sydney compared to some other cities like London or Moscow or other places like this is that you can enjoy in summertime the beaches right in the middle of the city. Like here in Corfu for example you have this beautiful old part of the city here but people do come and swim in the beaches all around the city. Now we see the same in Athens, where they have these huge uh, music bars, the beach bars, and they have organized uh, plus, organized beach where you can actually rent yourself an umbrella, you can get yourself a, a sunbed. Sometimes they give it to you for free, as long as you just pick up their beer or they, have, they frappe the coffee from the shop. And you have this organized uh, beaches where you can get all those things. Sometimes we don't see that in places like LA or even like in, uh, in, in Sydney. I think it's a good idea, it's not a bad idea. If you want to pay a few euros, for example, a few dollars to have that amenity, I think it should be there. It's not a bad idea. Now, there are many things that I loved in America, especially Los Angeles, and I have to say these guys are different. For example, when they build an awning for a petrol station, have a look at this. Yes, I mean, I don't know, it looks like an, a Mexican uh, building to me, or even a, a Corfield. You see the, the tiles are very similar here in Corfu and Greece, like they are in this particular uh, petrol station. But now have a look at this one in Beverly Hills. Yeah, the massive piece of concrete. It looks like a UFO, doesn't it? But look at the difference in the prices. When you're in the middle of Beverly Hills, you pay about four American dollars for a gallon. Yeah, that's right. 
But when you just come outside Beverly Hills, you're better on about $2, half the price. It works around about 50 cents Australian per liter, which is really cheap. That's the good thing about America. The fuel is very cheap there. But guess what? Everywhere you go in Los Angeles, I mean, we were at this beautiful marina and this beautiful shopping center. And on the other side of the road, look what we found. What are they? They're oil rigs. They're everywhere. Everywhere around Los Angeles. You're going down to the beach, you find them on the one side of the road, and the other side, it could be, like I said, a marina, or it could be a shopping center. And they're just pumping oil day and night. I didn't see any people there, just the machines working by themselves. Isn't that incredible? Another thing that I like about the Americans is that they look after their trees. Now, who? Who will do this? for a tree out on a footpath. What is it? They dressed it. I think the winters are getting pretty bad out here, so they put these clothes around the branches of the tree. Another thing I loved in Los Angeles, it was the signs. I mean, am I crazy? Do I like the signs? Who likes the signs, advertising signs? Well, these are signs with a difference. Normally in Australia or everywhere in the world, some sort of advertising firm will just get some plastic and they're just going to just um, uh, print on it, whatever, you know, the advertiser wants. But not here in Los Angeles. This is the city of art and they wouldn't have it. No way in the world. What they do, they paint the signs on the walls. Yes. Now, it could be just a small painting like this. Or it could be some decoration and stuff like that. But would you think that they would paint a full sign on a multi-story building in the middle of Hollywood? Yes, they do. Now have a look at this. They are painting this sign, this advertising sign from this movie by hand. A team of artists, a team of painters are just going down on on that elevator, painting every single thing by hand. Now, this is America. This is what I love about these guys. They are taking to the extreme. And this is a good example. Good on you guys.